Hello everyone, welcome to this course. We will be talking about Azure DevOps, focusing on how we can create validation pipelines and use them as a policy to prevent merging changes with errors and this way ensure the quality of our product. I will be using a sample project called Restful Booker that I host on my Azure repos. This is a backend project and we will be running some tests using Supertest. This course is intended to show you how to configure your pipelines and set policies in your branches once you have your test created. Also for this example, as I mentioned, I will be running backend tests, but the same configuration applies if you want to add UI tests or if you are using another language or tools. I will be talking about that in the next videos. For now, let's get ahead and get started. What is Azure DevOps? Azure is an ever-expanding set of cloud computing services to help your organization meet its business challenges. Azure gives you the freedom to build, manage, and deploy applications on a massive global network using your preferred tools and frameworks. In Azure, you have Azure Boards, Azure Repos, Azure Pipelines, Azure Test Plans, and Azure Artifacts. In Azure Boards, you can plan, track, and discuss work across teams, deliver value to your users faster. Azure Repos is an automated cloud hosted private Git repos collaborative pull request, advanced file management, and more. With Azure Pipelines, you have a CI CD that works with any language, platform, and cloud. Connect to GitHub or any Git provider and deploy continuously to any cloud. Azure Test Plan is the test management and exploratory testing toolkit that lets you ship with confidence. Azure Artifacts create, host, and share packages. Easily add artifacts to CI CD pipelines. In this course, we are focusing on Azure Repos and Azure Pipelines. The Azure Pipelines for create or pipeline or validation pipeline. And in the Azure Repos, we are uh, configuring our policies to whether a pipeline fails, it blocks or pull requests. We are going to show you that later in the next stage. Okay, so what is Azure Pipelines? Uh, Azure Pipelines uh, allows you to automate your builds and deployments with uh, pipelines, uh, so you spend less time with the nuts and bolts and more time being creative. Uh, Azure Pipelines uh, supports any language, any platform. You can build, test, and deploy Node.js, Python, Java, PHP, Ruby, C, C++, .NET, Android, and iOS applications. And you can run in parallel on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. It supports containers and Kubernetes. It's extensible and it's free for open source. Uh, with, pipe, with Azure Pipeline, you have uh, 10 free parallel jobs with unlimited builds uh, if your project is open source. Uh, well, it does a power for growth flows with native container support. Regarding uh, Azure Repos, Azure Repos uh, allows you to collaborate to build better code. This means you can perform more effective Git code reviews with threaded discussions and continuous integration for each change. You can use forks to promote collaboration with inner source workflows. Uh, you can automate with build in CI/CD, day, set up continuous integration or continuous delivery to automatically trigger builds, test and deployments with every completed pull request using Azure pipelines or your tools. You protect your code quality with branches policies. I mentioned branches policies before. With branches policies, you can keep code quality high by requiring code review, sign up, success builds, and passing tests before pull requests can be merged. You can customize your brand policies to maintain your team's high standards. Okay, so here we have our main dashboard from Azure DevOps. Here in the left panel, you can see uh, what I showed you previously the boards, repos, pipeline, test plans, artifacts, and well, an overview of the project where you can have a summary dashboard and your wiki. So let's focus on the first one and the pipelines. Okay, I have a sample pipeline right now, but I show you how to configure from scratch a pipeline. So you can click here and create a new pipeline. If you don't have any pipeline yet, it will show you here that it started with pipeline and it shows a button that says create a new pipeline also. So you can click here and create a new pipeline. And you have the option if your code is not within Azure, you can get your code from uh, Azure Repos, Bitbucket, GitHub, uh, Enterprise Server or other Git. 
uh, I'm gonna use the Classic Editor and feel more comfortable with that. And here you can select uh, again uh, where it's the source code. In this case, it's an Azure Repos. It's in here. And I'm gonna create a pipeline to run uh, all LinkedIn and unit test uh, for the feature branch. So here you can select uh, after what branch you want your pipeline to be triggered. So for this one, I'm gonna select feature branch and I'm gonna click on continue. So here uh, you have some uh, templates uh, from applications built in .NET, Android, ASP.NET, Azure, Maven, and others. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with an empty job and I'm gonna show you step by step how you can create your pipeline. Okay, so this is the first what you see when you uh, select an empty job. Uh, you you have your agent here. The agent is where all the commands will be running. Azure provides to you, as I mentioned, a lot of uh, configure pre-configure agents, and you select here Azure pipelines, or you can uh, create or manage your own agent. Uh, for this example, I'm gonna use the predefined for the thing of Azure pipelines. And you can show it here. If you again you want Mac OS, Ubuntu, VS uh, 2017, or Windows, uh, I'm gonna go with Mac OS uh, 10.15. And you have another configuration that I'm gonna leave it as it is right now. But uh, for example, uh, you can select here the timeout. Uh, if, uh, if your build cannot find an agent in a certain amount of time, uh, it will uh, fail. Or you have here to select dependencies or allows the switch to access authentication token uh, if you need an authentication token to access to save certain artifacts or packages. So I will gonna look at this too. You can rename, for example, I'm gonna be validate uh, LinkedIn uh, unit test. And then in the plus, you can add the tasks. Uh, in this case, my application is in Node. Uh, so I'm gonna install Node first in my agent. I want to get the latest version. And for run npm commands, we have a task that is called npm. You can add here. And the first thing we want to do with our application is to perform npm install, or to install the, the modules and dependencies. And here, you are asked to select where the packet JSON is. So you can here, it automatically loads all the files and all the applications in my package. JSON is here in the rest of the uh, folder. Uh, just pay attention that it's asking you for the folder that contains the package JSON, not the package JSON itself. So we need to put the folder. Uh, that's it. Uh, then we need to run npm link. So we need another npm command. For this, it's not an install, it's a custom. We select the folder where the packet JSON is and we run late. This is how you name it in your uh, script for the packet JSON. And finalize and then run the unit test. It's another custom. I select the folder where the packet JSON is. This npm test. You don't need to put npm here because well, the test do it for you. And well, that's it for the pipeline. Another thing here, you have you can set variables or options. Where you have uh, certain options. For example, you want to name your build. Uh, I use uh, I use this name convention name, uh, it names the build definition with the team project name 
the field definition name, uh, the source branch, what is the, the source branch name where it's being triggered, the date and the revision. And we well, have another options here, and some demands, if you have to run a certain agent, specific that, you can do that. In triggers, you can schedule or build completion. You can here set that you want to build your pipeline uh, every weekday at 4 a.m. or weekends. Uh, you can do that. For now, I'm, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna save and run to show you how this works. So you can here you can run with a comment and the agent. This one is going to make matters and the, the branch that it will be given. This is for manual trigger. I'm gonna show you in the next video how to set a policy to automatically trigger a pipeline and with certain events like creating a pull request. So I'm gonna click save and run. Okay. So here we have our validation pipeline. It's looking for an agent right now. You can see here the clock, it's that it's queue that is running. So, if you run the LinkedIn, run the unit test, and it's finished. Let me show you here all the steps. Here we use the node, install the npm install. Here runs the LinkedIn, and here you can see the command. Uh, the agent and the command that is running that is S linked and it has no errors. Here we are running the unit test and all eight passed. And mm, I want you to notice that uh, npm custom, npm custom, npm install. This is not uh, as descriptive as we want, so we can do rename that. Let me show you. So this is running linking and running unit test. So we can save and queue again. And now, ah, look at the name. It's like the name combination that I select. The team name, so the team name, webinar, the pipeline name, in this case webinar CI, the branch name that it's featured, the date and the revision. This is the third uh, run that we perform. So we show we check out the project. Now it's installing the node. Now we are performing npm install. We are running the LinkedIn right now and the unit test. And the job are being penalized and it all wins. So if we click here on pipelines, we hit the status of success. And you can see here all the rows. And you can see in the name, uh, we have the three of them. And the branches that are being uh, referred to. In this case, is all the features we're featuring now. So, uh, that's it for it uh, for this video. Uh, later, I'm going to show you how to configure uh, your branching policy to automatically trigger uh, a build pipeline. So, uh, thank you for watching this.
Okay, so now let's see about the branch policies. And uh, we create our pipeline, so we're going to use that, that pipeline to prevent of merging a pull request if this pipeline is failing. And how do we do that? And um, by setting up a branch and policies. So here on the repos, if we click on branches, we have three branches, master branch, dev branch, and feature branch. Uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, branching strategy and what to test in each branch or stage later on on this course, but for now, I'm only going to um, show you how to set up the branching policies. So for example, uh, if we want to set up a, a policy in the feature branch, we click here in the three dots and select branch policies. Sometimes take time. Okay, here we have a branch policies for the feature branch. So we have uh, different options here uh, for protecting this branch. So we can require a minimum number of reviewers. For example, we need uh, for at least two members of the team review uh, this code. Uh, after merging uh, we can here set it up uh, to allow the requester to approve the own changer or not or we can prohibit the most recent pusher from approving their own changes we can allow completion even if some reviewers vote to wait or reject and we can reset reset code reviews votes when there are new changes we are not doing this right now uh, we can check for linked or items. This is for encourage traceability. Uh, we can check the common resolution and limit merge types. Uh, but here is where we are going to put uh, our pipeline or the definition pipeline to prevent merging if it fails. So we click here on that build policy. We select our pipeline we created previously in the previous video. Uh, it will trigger automatically whenever the source branch is updated, but also you can choose manual, but the best practice is uh, by doing automatically. Uh, the policy, uh, we, it's required or optional. If you if you, if you build, uh, you want your build to succeed in order to complete pull request, you have to select require. If you should choose optional, even if the pipeline fails, you can merge that pull request and that's what don't don't we want to do that and we click on save so we are having here our build validation policy so it will trigger automatically and uh, after our branch is updated and we are going going to see how it works in the next video okay so now we're going to see how the build is automatically triggered after we made a change to the source branch. So for this uh, video, I made a new branch from the dev branch. It will be our feature branch that is called modify test. So I'm going to modify this test and I'm going to put you new dates. This should not affect our test pace passing and failing. So let me commit those changes stage and commit and push the change and we're going to see here after pushing can see here the pull request and the build in progress. Uh, if we click in here, we can see the progress of the build. 
that all the steps that we've previously defined in the pipeline video. So it's running for all the stages, use node, npm install, rule linting, we're going to test. And the post job step. So it's going right now. So it's a matter of wait to finish it to build the connection. So let me refresh the screen. It seems like it did. Okay. So it finished and it passed. So if we go back to our pull request, we can see here the build succeed and we can complete. Notice that complete is enabled and it says complete here because the build succeed and now we can merge this. But what happened with the builds that failed? So let's let's make that test fail. Yes, and failure in test. Let's push those changes. Okay, so right now the build is queue again because we detect a new date from the branch. So automatically queue a new build. So we can go here and see the progress of the build. So LinkedIn and the unit test will fail. So here we have the unit test fail. And if we go back to our pull request, we can see that the build is failed and the complete is not enabled. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you the branch of strategies and what to test and what to trigger in each day. So now that we learned how to trigger a build pipeline, let's look to see what is a release pipeline. So, the part of build pipeline, it's uh, what we know as CI, but the part of CD here in Azure DevOps, it's the part of releases. So, let's create a, a new release. And for here, let me console this, create a new release pipeline. Okay, so first of all, when we create a new release pipeline, we can select a template or just start with an empty job. I, I'm gonna select a start with an empty job. And here, we can add the artifact that will trigger this release definition. So in this case, it will be our build definition that we previously create, the webinar CI. And we always tend to have the latest version, but we can select a specific version or a specific for a specific branch with tags. So I'm gonna select the latest, and I'm gonna add. So right now we are ha we are getting the artifacts for this build definition, but we are not triggering uh, automatically. If we want to trigger automatically, we can select here continuous deployment trigger, and we are going to enable and this release definition will be triggered automatically after every build definition succeed. If we don't want uh, this release definition after every build definition, for example, to the practice to trigger a release definition only after a build for merge, sorry, for master branch or for the branch. So we can add a filter here and indicate that we only want to trigger this release definition after a build from that. 
or and after a build from master and it depending on where we have uh, the trigger it will be uh, run certain steps so I'm gonna save that and we have here stage uh, for continuous deployment it's common to release or deploy to QA and later to production so I'm gonna name that Okay, so here we will trigger automatically after finish the previous stage. So if we want to prevent that, for example, if the deploy to QA is successful, we don't want to automatically deploy to production. So we want to add a pre-deployment condition. So here we can request for pre-deployment approval. So some users have to approval after deploy to production. In this case, I'm going to approve here. You can put more than one user, and, and you can apply these policies. The user requesting a release or deployment should not appropriate or revalidate identity of approval before completing the approval, or skip approval existing approval approved the previous stage. And we also can have gates, minutes, delays, and another. Uh, another condition so we can indicate here that this stage we're gonna start after the previous stage or after a release of only manual so from here if I click save now I can go to releases see here and I can start a new release manual. So we can see here, to start with deploy to QA. It will put all the tasks that we have here. And here, it doesn't start automatically because it says pending of approval on Brian Minos. In this case is waiting for my approval. So if I click approve, I can put a comment. I click approve, and it will go to production. So progress right now, and it succeeds. So this was manual trigger. We can see here, but we here put that can be automatically triggered after build uh, from dev or master so if i go to the pipelines and i run a new pipeline from master after it finish this build definition will be triggered the release definition so let's wait for that So here it finished and if we go to release it will be automatically trigger. Here release two, it will automatically trigger a new release. So if we click here in the release, it says that it was continuous deployment. It doesn't say uh, manually trigger as the previous one. So if you start, it's Q, it's in progress right now. It's 
to see if you're planning for my approval. And it's now released. It's important to mention that all the artifacts that this build definition generate can be used here in the different stage. In these stages, we have the same task for the build definition. And for example, if we want to deploy using uh, a C sharp or a .NET application, we have um, uh, oh, sorry. We have this Visual Studio build and Visual Studio test, but in Visual Studio build, we can publish a new get to the artifact, a new get package will be using for this one. So let add, and you can publish or push our previously configured feed. I have this feed, and we'll be pushing that new get package. Um, that's uh, that's all for the continuous deployment. It's more than uh, deploying to different stages. What's the difference from a build definition to a release definition? Let's see here. We have our repository. We, uh, we have our build pipeline that is the CI part, and the release pipeline that is the CD part. And this here we usually. Well, we install the tools, we build the solution, run the test, uh, as we mentioned, and we'll package all the artifacts and publish all the artifacts and automatically trigger a release definition. This release definition, what I usually do is deploy to different stages, that stage to a stage in production. And between them, we have the approval on the gates that we sell. Um, and that's it for the video. Uh, in the last video, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna explain you a little bit a summary and the branching strategy and explain you where to test some tests or how to validate LinkedIn and unit tests or integration tests depending on the stages. Uh, so thank you for watching the video. Well, to summarize, Azure DevOps offers five services, the Azure Board, the Azure Repos, the Azure Pipelines, the Azure Test One, and the Azure Artifact. And to finish, what to test and where? Well, you can start testing the code as soon as each commit. So after a developer makes a commit, you can use tools like Husky to test the static code analysis and to trigger the unit test. After that, when a pull request is created, you can validate in the build pipeline created in Azure. The static code analysis, the unit test, the functional test, it will be backend and UI, and an audit. When a pull request is approved and completed, a merge happens, and after each merge, you can run our whole regression test set to ensure that everything works fine and nothing will be broken. So that would be all for this course. I hope you enjoyed and you learned about Azure DevOps and what has to offer. If you have any comments or any doubts, please let us know. Thank you so much.